CGTN's Hendrik Sabrandi is in Houston, which was home to the Apollo program. Hendrik, a big day there for the people who are gathered. Who's there? Well, uh, good evening, Roy, or should I say hello from the moon. This is uh, Space Center Houston, where we're standing. This is the uh, lunar section of Space Center Houston. They've done a pretty good job of reproducing the lunar landscape behind me. You see a U.S. astronaut. You see a, a lunar rover, as well as the Earth hovering over the uh, lunar landscape. This is a significant day in the sense that the moon is now farther from the Earth than at any point during its orbit around the Earth, a total of 405,000 kilometers. It's also, of course, a very big big day as well in terms of that anniversary, and the folks here in Houston are making sure the occasion does not go unnoticed. Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. On July 20th, 1969, Apollo 11 astronauts reached a historic mark in the journey to man's next frontier of space, the surface of the moon. That's one small step for man, one this really made it tangible and real and accessible, I think, for people around the world. William Harris heads NASA's Space Center Houston, where that miraculous moment, that huge scientific achievement, is being remembered exactly 50 years later. Think about this. We're 50 years into this business. I don't feel 50 years older. <laughs> it's real, real great pleasure. It's an honor to be here, an honor to be representing NASA and my mission control teams. Apollo 11 flight director Gene Kranz is one of those connected with the landmark mission who have returned this weekend to honor, among others, the dozen Apollo astronauts who ended up walking on the moon. I think of our fathers as being those, like those early explorers, Columbus, and all of those different men and women who discovered new worlds. The Apollo program is really celebrated year-round at the Space Center. Witness the moon rocks that are always on display. It kind of feels like Play-Doh. In fact, parts of this complex, where astronauts trained and worked, appear frozen in time. This is Mission Operations Control Room 2, the way it looked back in 1969. It's been immaculately restored to its original condition, minus, of course, the cigarette, cigar, and pipe smoke. But including the map that fixed the moonwalkers' exact locations, the flowers that mysteriously showed up before each mission, and the coffee pot that fueled the intense work that went on here. It was really important that we bring this room back to life. It's time now, many space enthusiasts say, to refire those exploratory engines that powered an eight-year lunar sprint back then, starting with a return trip to the moon. It's the uh, place we can get to. It's the one place we can explore easily. Astronomer Jack Burns' goal is to place two radio telescopes on the lunar surface. He says today's advanced technology will allow us to use the moon as a stepping stone to Mars. In going to the moon this time, what we're going to be doing is we're going to really be taking Silicon Valley with us. Of landing a man on the moon? No need, Harris says, for Cold War style competition to drive our efforts. It's not a reaction to something that was a perceived threat or a race against another nation. It's really about greater insight, learning, innovation, and the opportunities that it presents. I'm thrilled to have space back in the conversation. Poppy Northcutt, uh, NASA's first female engineer during the Apollo days, says the public's fascination with space hasn't gone away, but she worries about America's political will and funding for endeavors like the proposed Artemis moon mission in 2024. We can get together, we can have a common goal, we can achieve great things if we have common goals. So maybe we should get another common goal. It's worth considering, she says, half a century after the seemingly impossible became reality, another world away. Now, uh, behind me is the Apollo 17 command module. Uh, this was the last mission, in fact, to uh, the moon back in December of 1972. That's uh, what Apollo 17 was. Lots of moon-related activities going on all across the U.S. today uh, in Huntsville, Alabama, where they made the Saturn V rocket. Uh, Buzz Aldrin, the second Apollo 11 astronaut to uh, set foot on the moon right after Neil Armstrong, he was back down in Cape Canaveral today where uh, the rocket first blasted off in July of 1969. Speaking of Armstrong, he died back in 2012. Uh, only four uh, moonwalkers survived to this day, but this evening, a little bit later this evening, they're going to mark the exact moment 50 years ago when he did set foot on the moon. That'll happen here at 9.56 uh, local time here in Houston. They're going to do an elaborate interactive countdown 
to uh, mark uh, that event. And uh, lots of folks will be attending that, as well as the activities scheduled uh, outside the Space Center all evening long. So clearly, Roy, a big deal here in Houston, Texas. Hendrick Sabrandi, CGTN, Houston.